In episode three, when Marie gets back to her dorm room, she doesn't see Emma anywhere, but she can hear her. She can hear Emma calling for help, and Marie starts looking around, and there's Emma, as small as Marie has ever seen her. Emma is really, really struggling, and Marie gives her food. And that's how Emma gets bigger, is just simply by eating. Once Emma is normal size, she comes clean to Marie about how exactly she goes about getting small. And Marie's concerned for her. But Emma's had a really long day. She was just fighting off a bunch of ants to stay alive. She doesn't really feel like being told a PSA at the moment. She goes to the Cliff Notes version of her life that, yes, her mother knows. Yes, she's in control. And truthfully, it's not a big deal. But Marie doesn't see it like that. She starts suggesting that Emma talk to somebody, maybe get some help for this. And Emma fires back, you cut yourself. That's your power. Well, this is my power. So you know what? Let's do what you talked about. Let's just go back to being roommates. Both girls turn over and they go to bed. But in a dorm room not too far away, Andre returns to Kate, and he's trying to get her to regain consciousness. She eventually does, but when she was out, she was having a dream from a few years ago where her and Luke went to go visit Sam. At that point, Sam was at a place called the Sage Grove Center Psychiatric Hospital, and he was going crazy based on Compound V being in his system. While Luke got awesome powers, Sam got some powers, but as he puts it, he also got a messed up brain. That memory goes away, though, once Kate regains consciousness and she's just spent. This sort of thing's happened before. She just needs her medication. But Andre's legitimately concerned. Much like Emma, Kate kind of brushes it to the side. Andre then focuses on how everything Luke said was true and how they have to get Sam out. But Kate says, how? I mean, you go in there and you're good to get caught. She just doesn't see an avenue where this ends well for them, even if they use their powers. Kate tells Andre to drop it. Andre doesn't want to drop it. But their hormones, folks, they're racing. So they end up hooking up that night. The next day, most of campus is getting ready, though, for the Think Brink fundraiser. Most of the top 10 students are going in some fashion. Now, most of them are going with their parents, who they don't have great relationships with. Marie is going at the behest of the dean, who invited her over for breakfast that morning. Dean makes her chocolate chip pancakes because that's what her daughter used to love. Turns out the dean had a daughter. And then pitches her on coming as her guest in order to kind of curry some donations. The night of the event, Marie ends up showing up and she's basically paraded around like a show pony. She's also getting dirty looks from Jordan. Jordan's not happy with what Marie did during that interview. In fact, neither is Kate. For Jordan, it's personal. For Kate, it was the fact that Marie was talking like she knew Luke when she actually didn't. But Jordan's also had a pretty rough day. Jordan's parents came down to escort them to this fundraiser, and Jordan doesn't have a great relationship with his dad because his dad has always looked at Jordan as a boy, never a girl. It seemed like Jordan's father just had trouble accepting the fact that his son was by gender. Jordan's father thinks that the only reason Jordan switches over to a girl is to piss him off, but that couldn't be farther from the case. So Jordan's not getting accepted by his father, and he's also not getting accepted by the board of directors who choose the top 10, because Jordan's numbers just aren't good enough anymore, even though he is the best student at Godalkin. Jordan, though, isn't the only person that has a rocky relationship with her parents. So does Emma. Emma's mom, Tiffany, shows up to escort her to the gala, and she's a big wig in the TV industry. And she's also okay with exploiting her daughter's eating disorder. Emma's mother introduces her to Courtney, a senior producer at Vaught who's into reality television. Emma's mom has pitched Courtney on a reality show focused on Little Cricket. But it isn't a feel-good show. It's more of a, man, the story you didn't know, the secret she was hiding, her eating disorder. The way that both of these adults talk about Emma's eating disorder is extremely cavalier. And Emma's worried about being that open with the public. But to Courtney and to Emma's mom, it doesn't seem like that big of an issue. Emma ends up excusing herself to go to the bathroom, and that's where she runs into Emma. Both girls apologize to each other. They say how they want to be friends. They give each other a hug. And Emma's feeling way better about the situation when she exits the bathroom. She returns to the table with Courtney and Tiffany, and she just has a couple of ideas for this proposed show. She doesn't want it to be like this expose on a girl with an eating disorder. She wants to be more like Queen Maeve. And her mom laughs at her, saying, honey, you're not Queen Maeve. 
It's at that moment that Emma brings up how if this TV show were to go down, she would be exploited, but her mom brushes it to the side. And that's when Emma turns to Courtney and says, did you know that she taught me how to throw up? She then stands up, looks at her mom, and says, go fork yourself. Sorry, folks, I'm trying to keep the ads on here. Emma goes outside to grab some air, but as she's going outside, she catches the eye of another person who's dealing with parent issues, Andre. Andre was dragged to this thing by his father, who is not pleased. He's pissed off at Andre that he missed the interview. Andre told his dad that he simply overslept. That's the reason why, and he'll make it up to him at this gala by just shaking hands, kissing babies, and making sure that everybody there knows that he should remain number one at the school. But when Andre sees Emma step outside, he decides to do the same thing, telling his dad he's just going to the bathroom. As he's heading out, though, he runs into Kate, who he wasn't expecting to see there. Turns out she's not with her parents. She just bought a ticket. She did show up, though, to see Andre. She wants to talk about the whole hooking up situation, and he tells her we'll do it later, just not now. He goes outside to find Emma. He had been looking for Emma because he needs Emma. Somebody who can get that small would be perfect for getting Sam out of the woods. He shows Emma the video. He then shows Emma the proof that what Luke's saying is real, and Sam is, in fact, under the school. And then he pitches her the idea that she gets small because if he goes in there, he's going to get caught. But as soon as he says it, he regrets saying it because he realized that he's putting somebody in the theater program at risk. She's not ready for this. She hasn't been trained for it. But Emma is certainly down. The two quickly head over to the stairwell where the men with guns were. Luke gives Emma a tracking chip and then Emma shrinks down. That way he can follow her. He tells her that he'll see her in an hour and then he heads back to the gala so his father doesn't get suspicious of where he went. Emma's able to get into Sam's room by sneaking on his food tray. Sam, however, quickly notices that there is not something right with the food tray. There's a little person on there. Now, initially, he can't quite figure out why this small person is in his room, and he's shocked when Emma says, it's because of you. I was sent here to scout ahead. But to Emma's surprise, Sam doesn't want to go. He starts making the case that he's actually comfortable in this room because he's got a beanbag chair, and they're cool. But he also mentions how he's tried to escape before it never ends well. His mood, though, changes when Emma says, your brother sent me. He looks at Emma and says, well, then I guess I'll give you all the codes to the security doors because I know them all. Now with the security codes in hand, Emma just has to wait for the orderly to come back and collect a tray of food so she can get out of there. Back at the gala, though, Andre returns and unfortunately his dad noticed how long he was gone. He can tell that something is distracting Andre, so he finally says, what is it? You mad at me or something? And Andre says, no, I'm actually trying to be a superhero. Something isn't right. There's some kind of secret hospital underneath the school where they keep everybody. And Andre's dad just hugs him, but he does so to get close to his ear. He asks Andre, who else did you tell about this? And Andre lies and says, nobody. And his dad says, well, then don't tell another soul about this. You're going to get yourself killed. And it's at that moment that Andre realizes his dad knew about this the entire time. This is a pretty shocking revelation to Andre. It's not the only shocking revelation that goes down in the room, though. After being paraded around all night, Marie's kind of sick of it. She goes to leave. She gets stopped by Jordan, who just starts insulting her. And Marie's not in the mood. Her and Kate don't care. They keep going in. But when Jordan mentions how Marie is probably mommy and daddy's pride and joy... Marie looks back and says, well, you're wrong about that one because my parents are dead. In fact, I killed them. Jordan doesn't believe that story at all, but Marie goes into details about how it happened and about how, because of it, she never feels like a superhero. This helps Jordan and Kate see Marie in a completely new light. Kate especially knows how she feels. She tells her a story that the first time she realized she had powers was when she told her brother to run away and never come back. And they never found her brother. Her mom, to this day, never touches her. Jordan doesn't have a similar situation. She does, though, feel bad for Marie. They then get interrupted by Andre, who comes over and tells the group, yeah, I think I really screwed up, and it has to do with Emma. They're all kind of confused as to what he's talking about, but Andre, looking at his phone, realizes that Emma hasn't moved in a while. He's worried that she's stuck down in the basement. And he's worried that by telling his dad that he knows about the basement, it's putting Emma in danger. Well, in fact, it is. 
because down in the basement, an alarm goes off, and Emma doesn't know what's going on, but Sam certainly does. He knows that they know she's down there. Being as small as she is, she's easily able to hide, and then soldiers come in and electrocute Sam, immobilizing him. Emma wasn't about to sit back and just get found. Like Ant-Man, she hops on the soldier's back, climbs into his ear, and climbs through his brain, killing him. The issue is, that's not the only soldier she's going to have to deal with, because more of them run in the room. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it, smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry, it'll be up in a day or two.